Uh, my name is Michael, and I'm a Flash developer. Uh, I just want to take the recent HTML5 versus Flash thing and kind of come at it with a perspective from someone who really understands both technologies and what is and isn't possible with them. So, um, first thing I want to address is the whole Steve Jobs open letter, um, Flash is old, HTML is the future, uh, which could very well be true. However, it's not something that's true right now or in the foreseeable future. Um, so one of the other things I really want to talk about is that Flash can't, quote unquote, can't run uh, on a touchscreen device, that its old content will not work on a touchscreen. And a few people have posted videos, um, you know, showing, yes, you can. So, you know, I took it upon myself for the sake of making this video, and I went to Best Buy today, and I took some uh, video of working with just some recent sites that have been published on the FWA.com uh, showing that they work well with touchscreen. Things work pretty good. It works very well. Flash is an intensive program. It is a multimedia interactive graphics intensive platform. Now, Flash should be used for everything. Should you make your Flash website for your restaurant in Flash? Maybe, probably not. Uh, would you make your Flash website for, you know, I mean, blogs, forums, obviously not. Um, but will you use Flash to create an interactive experience for your brand? You're launching a new car, a new product, you wanna make an immersive experience that's gonna kind of capture the user and be more than just fade in, fade out. And, and, and for that, you're gonna use processor. However, this is very important that I did a little digging and I did a little research with HTML5 and Flash. And uh, I think it's important to point out that even though Steve Jobs is pushing HTML5 so hard right now, it doesn't even perform nearly as good as Flash doing much, much simpler tasks. I wanted to show some examples of, you know, the most recent use of HTML5. It's obviously very new. People are just getting going with it. And I have to say, it reminds me of Flash seven, eight, nine, ten years ago. It's, it's not very far along, um, and, and its performance is not good. So let's, uh, let's play this pool game here. I'm on, uh, I'm on oh, what is this website? Canvasdemo.com. I'm on Firefox on a Mac. So let's, let me start to play this. We'll put the ball here. And this is cool. The fact that this is in your browser. Oh, let me put this down. The fact that it's... How do I, there we go. Maybe we'll do it like this. So here we go. So now there's some, you know, cool. But but look, it's using 85% of one CPU, 90, you know, and, and the balls are just slowly moving around. So uh, take another kind of swing at it. You know, and here we go again. CPU usage in Firefox is almost, you know, getting up to three quarters of using one whole CPU. There's 80. You know, so let's say it uses just about 40% of all the processing power available on my MacBook to render this simple animation. So now, let's go up here and we'll Google a Flash pool game. And we're going to find a whole bunch. So I'll check the first one. Okay. So... Right off the bat, this is obviously a much nicer experience. Like real graphics. Now let's play. So here we go. CPU, 38%, 22%. That's about, and now remember that's 20% of two cores. 
So that's about using 10%, 10 to 15% of the processing power versus 40 to 50 for a game with much less, you know, going on in the game. Um, another thing to be noted is Apple's own website. Um, I'm going to go to apple.com slash iPad. So let's check this out. So on apple.com slash iPad, we've got this fade in, fade out effect going. Apple's recently removed um, all flash from their website. They kind of used to use it uh, to showcase their products. So now they've, they're using like a, probably my guess is jQuery or Mood Tools uh, fade in, fade out of this iPad uh, image here. So looks cool, you know. You know, it's obviously the most simplest of tasks. So let's take a look at the processor as this happens. So we're at 2%, right? And as it fades, jumps up to 63%. See? Uh, jumps up. So I want to kind of put this so you can see both at the same time. Here we go. 48%. Goes away, fades. 60% of a CP of the of one core, so it's using about 30% of my processor just to fade in and fade. All right, so let's check this out on an iPhone now. So here's the same animation, and it's really not working too well. It kind of either gets weird and loses the animation for a second, like that, or like it just fades directly, just jumps from one image right to the other. And, and, and this is supposed to be, you know, this is what Apple is claiming is the future, and, and it's supposed to work on their mobile devices. Now, if you want to make a regular website that's informational and, and, you know, basic rollovers, that's great. That's awesome. But if you're trying to make an interactive experience like I typically need to do with my Flash development, this will never work. This could never be a solution. So um, another, you know, example um, is this. It's a, in the physics section of uh, canvasdemos.com. So here we've got, um, looks like it's an image generator. Um, no interactivity whatsoever. Um, pretty decent so far. Um, after a couple minutes, it does start to really slow down. But let's use that. Let's check how much, you know, this is using a full one core of my processor. Um, now now it's yep, now it's starting to slow. And uh I mean that's really all there is to it. So this is kind of this this is this is holding steady at ninety nine hundred and eight, you know, percent of uh one you know, for processing power, which is about one whole processor out of the one whole core out of two two cores. So if I wanna see what we can kind of get using to use the same amount of processing power as uh, that physics thing. We're going to go here to Active Den, and I picked the probably the coolest example we found. So there's some boxes, and they dropped out. Um, so now that that's it's using about half of a core, but it's rendering these boxes. 3D. They're 3D boxes, as you can kind of see. There's sides to them, and it's a complete physics environment. As I'm moving these around, it's still holding steady. It's really using literally the same exact amount of power as that HTML5 dot. There's another video, uh, which I'll link in the com in the uh, description of this one, to uh, another guy who basically took the iPad and, and Steve Jobs said, build, uh, build an HTML5 uh, site and it'll be usable on our devices. And so um, this gentleman took him up on his offer and went to the same canvasdemos.com website and tried to use four or five different uh, demos of Canvas's, you know, supposedly the, the best of what Canvas is doing right now in HTML5, and none of them were usable on the iPad. They all had to be, uh, would need to be reprogrammed. And a lot of people are commenting and saying, well, it's not an iPad version. Well, that's the point. You're not supposed to need an iPad version in order to...